today for this video what I want to do is show you how to set up the degree measures and the radians for each rotation for the unit circle. Um, they are the important ones that you need to remember. So what we are going to do is we're always going to start on the x-axis, the positive x-axis, and we are going to rotate counterclockwise. So in another video I will show you how to find the coordinates of each of the points, but the purpose of this video is to show you the rotation, the angle rotation. So what we have is we always, like I said, start at the x-axis. So we start at zero degrees. And then you have a couple of different options. If you notice, this one is the midpoint of each of them. So this is going to be a 45 degree angle. And then we go up to the 90. And then the midpoint of the next one is going to be our, our next 45 degree angle. So if I take 45 plus 90, we get 135 degrees. And then we're halfway around the circle to 180 degrees. And then again, the midpoint, you're just adding the 45 to it, so that would put us at 225 degrees. And then we are down to another 90 degrees from there is 270 degrees. And then if we add 45 again, we get up to 315 degrees. And then when we get back all the way around the circle, we rotated 360 degrees. So the midpoint of each of those is 45 degree measurements. So I basically broke it up into 45 degree measurements. And then the next one that we're gonna look at is formed by the 30, 60, 90 triangles. So we're gonna count by 30s. So we would have 30 degrees here. So this angle of rotation right here is 30 degrees. If I add 30 to it, that gets us at 60, and then we're again back to 90. And then if I add 30, I'm up to 120. And add 30 again, and I put that on the wrong place. Let me fix that. We're using the dotted lines for the degree measures. Okay, and then if I add 30 again, I'm to 150 degrees, and then 180. Add 30 again, I'm at 210. Add 30, we get 240. 270, 300, and then 330 degrees. So the degree measures are simple because of the fact that um, you're either dealing with a 30, 60, 90 triangle or a 45, 45, 90 okay, rotation. So, um, and the reason for that is they're special right triangles. And I, like I said, I will do another video that addresses the coordinate measures that come from the 30, 60, 90, and the 45, 45, 90 um, relationships. So that's why we use those in the unit circle. So now let's talk about radian measures. If you remember, 180 degrees is equal to um, pi radians. So if we go half a circle, we've rotated pi as far as the circumference goes. If we go all the way around, 360 degrees is 2 pi. So those we could fill in. Let me grab a different color because it doesn't show up as well. Grab a darker blue. Okay, so we have 2 pi here, and we started at 0. So it starts at 0 radians um, because you haven't rotated any. If you've gone all the way around the circle, the arc length is 2 pi. So at 180, remember that we've gone pi rotation. So if you remember those, that will help you out. And basically what we are going to do is convert each of these. Okay, um, so again, if we start with the 45 degrees, this ends up being a quarter of the way. So if we look at it, we have 45, 90, 135, 180. So we've broken up into a quarter. Um, so 45 is always going to be pi over four. And then if you think about it, this is gonna be two pi over four because we've gone now, like we're gonna count by that. So that reduces to pi over two, or I could put 90 over 180, which also would be pi over two. And then this one over here would be three pi over four. And then if I think about it, if I'm counting by one fourths, um, this really is four pi over four, which just reduces to pi. And then we're gonna have five pi over four. 6 pi um, over 4 reduces to 3 pi over 2. And then if I keep adding, the next one would be 7 pi 
over 4. And then this is 8 pi over 4, which just gives us 2 pi. So if you count by 1 fourth for the 45 degree angles, that will help you to um, fill that in. Okay, and then the last ones that we're going to look at is the 30 degrees. If I take 30 over 180, it reduces to 1 sixth, 1 sixth, sorry. So this becomes pi over 6. Okay, if I add 1 6 to this, this becomes 2 pi over 6. So if you reduce it, that becomes pi over 3. Okay, um, so this is really 3 pi over 6, which just reduces to 1 half. This is going to be 4 pi over 6, um, which if I reduce that, reduces to 2 pi over 3. Okay, and then we are to 5 pi over 6. And if you think about it, I'm just adding 1 6 to that, which gives me 6 over 6, which is just 1. This one is going to be 7 pi over 6, which cannot be reduced. The next one is 8 pi over 6, which because 8 and 6 are both even, I can reduce that to 4 pi over 3. Okay, um, 9 pi over 6 reduces to the 3 halves. 10 pi over 6 reduces to 5 pi over 3. And then 11 pi over 6 gives us our last one. So if you just think about it in terms of the fraction of the circle that you are dealing with, um, it helps you to be able to reduce things. It helps you to see um, what's happening and sometimes counting by the fractions makes it easier to remember instead of having to remember that this is pi over 6. If we just think about it as 30 over 180, it reduces to 1 sixth and then I'm just adding 1 sixth each time but reducing it down. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.